Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, a show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Today we're going to be giving the effects a break for now and we're going to be talking about the newest addition to the Lone Archer Films family, our new camera, the Panasonic GH4. Now I'm not going to go crazy in depth with the camera, there's plenty of long ass videos doing that. I'm just going to talk about my first impressions, the good, the bad, and then we'll finish off with the benefits of shooting 4K and some test footage. So let's get started with the good. First off, the price. Being able to buy a 4K camera for under $2,000 is a huge deal. Now to put that in perspective, I bought my 5D Mark II nearly four years ago for close to $3,000 and my camera before that, the Panasonic HVX, was over $7,000. Neither of these come close to the image you can pull off with this camera. Next up, recording to SD cards. My 5D recorded to compact flash cards and they were expensive and not everyone stocked them. SD cards are nowhere near as expensive and you can buy them from anywhere. If I'm on a shoot and I run out of space, it's a quick trip to get an extra one and it's simple as that. Variable frame rates in Full HD. While the variable frame rates aren't in 4K, it's still a step up from the Canon iterations that have limited frame rates beyond 24 and 30 frames to 720p and lower. Even the GoPro Super Slow Motion dips below Full HD. With the GH4, you can record up to 96 frames per second in 1080p and it looks great. I'm sure someone will eventually figure out how to unlock the frame rates for 4K as well. It's only a matter of time. Autofocus in video mode. Now some people might poo poo this and say, you shouldn't leave focus up to the camera. But for a one man crew like myself, this is a lifesaver. Many times I've been shooting and I've accidentally missed my mark and I've had to go back and reshoot scenes. Or, you know, I've felt restricted in certain shots because I can't lean forward or back for fear of being outside that critical focus. It's not about leaving it up to the camera. I'm still setting up the shot and focus area. It's about peace of mind, so this gets a big tick from me. Being able to control the camera wirelessly from your phone. Once again, for self-shooting one-man crews like me, this is a must, because in the past I've had to stumble across cables hooked up to a laptop to control the camera. Not anymore. I like that. And now onto the bad, and it's a short list. No autofocus in slow motion or variable frame rates. This isn't a deal breaker, but it is annoying. Basically, you have to manually focus your subject in this mode. The alternative being that you go into the menu, turn off variable frame rates, get your focus, turn back on your frame rate and begin shooting. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me and I'm not sure why they did this, but hopefully Panasonic will hear my prayers and fix this in a future firmware update. The expansion unit costs more than the actual camera. This to me makes no sense. I don't plan on buying the expansion unit anytime soon because at this moment in time, not too many people have 4K screens and monitors, so uploading 4K footage just seems like a waste. Which brings me to my next point. So let's talk about some of the benefits to shooting with 4K as opposed to Full HD. Firstly, you have a much larger image, and that larger image allows you to do a great number of things. For example, I can crop the shot down to 1080p and create a number of different shots, say a wide shot and a close-up, all using that same shot and not losing any resolution. I can move around the frame and create a tracking shot in the same way. I can shoot a tracking shot handheld, stabilize the motion in After Effects, and create a smooth steady cam style shot all without losing any resolution in the picture, just like in this example. Cropping the 4K image down allows for a sharper picture overall, which for someone like me that shoots a lot of green screen footage is invaluable as more detail on the image allows you to pull a better key and minimizes the amount of noise in the image. So you can see from just a couple of examples that it opens up a ton of possibilities for you inside your editor. So let's take a look at some example footage. I've included download links for some of the example shots, including a green screen example down below. They're all straight out of the camera, so, you know, check them out and have a play. So that's my overview on the Panasonic GH4. I'm sure I'll have more to say about it in the coming months as I explore it further, but as for right now, I'm very excited about the possibilities. So what do you think about the GH4? Good, bad, indifferent? Sound off in the comments and let me know. 
I'll have a new effects laden episode of Film Learning for you in a few days, as well as my opinion on that final Ninja Turtles trailer. So be sure and give that subscribe button a little click action to ensure you get it quick smart. Be sure to like up the video, I make them every single week, you can follow me on Twitter, you can check out our Facebook page, and as always my friends, keep learning!